Hey, welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. And I'm Eric. Yeah, Eric's our new resident movie nerd. And uh, recently we ran an audience survey asking you guys what kind of content you wanted to see more of. Uh, one of the things you said you'd like to see more of is cool breakdowns and analysis. So we're gonna take a crack at it. We've done some of these before, but we're gonna go way more in depth than any of the ones that we've tried. Uh, luckily for all of us, the Avengers Infinity War trailer just hit and we can stop, we just, we just, all day long we've been talking about it and digging in and analyzing it, so let's get to it. Yeah, prepare to get nerdy. Yeah, now we yeah. should note uh, we'll be discussing events from the movies that are out since they kind of provide background for what's coming. That includes Thor Ragnarok, and we'll be speculating about what we think is gonna happen in upcoming movies uh, that's gonna get us to Infinity Wars as well, namely Black Panther. All right, cool? All right, so let's do this. There was an idea. to bring together a group of remarkable people. To see if we could become something more. So the trailer doesn't waste any time setting up the stakes. Uh, it starts with Sam Jackson's Nick Fury uh, talking, uh, then moves to Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, uh, Paul Bettany's Vision, Chris Hemsworth's Thor, and finally Scarlett Johansson's uh, uh, Black Widow. And they're repeating the uh, Avengers uh, kind of credo, the initiative credo. Right. Um, and uh, and that, that is really cool, because from a movie geek perspective, that kind of serves to remind the audience uh, you know this huge history that uh, that Marvel has here. They're bringing right, in like, all like these what older characters. Been building, yeah. Yeah, they bring in all these characters. They remind you, especially since Sam Jackson's been gone for a while, for a few <laughs> movies now. You know, it reminds you that it all started there. Yeah, and um, then, so there's all this history we have with these characters, and it really yeah. brings that back. And it also reminds you that that the Avengers only assemble when there's a real threat. Yeah, it sets the need. stakes. Yeah. It reminds us that this is very, very important. And yeah. uh, also just starts off real hard. Tony Stark not having a great day by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, from the second shot of the trailer, we already know our heroes are in way over their heads. In the next shot, Bruce Banner crashes through Doctor Strange's Sanctum Centaurum, which is a straight from the comic books. Uh, sort except, of. It's, kind of. <laughs> it's, a, it's a parallel to the comic books. Kind of. In the comics, it was Silver Surfer, but, you know, they don't have the rights for, for that guy. Right, so um, Hulk so is now, filling in that role. Because yeah. Fox owns the character uh, as part of their Fantastic yeah. Four deal for Silver Surfer. So we're probably going to be seeing a lot of familiar characters fill in for the, the characters that Marvel can't use in a big team-up project like this. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's, uh, uh, you know, it's really interesting, just as a quick sidebar, I think it's really interesting to me that, that, uh, 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 that you're getting that because the Hulk actually hasn't had a lot to do. In, it's, in it does seem stuff. like, it's yeah, like, he doesn't have his own standalones. He's yeah. been in a lot of other people's movies, yeah. but kind of like Black Widow, yeah. sidelined a lot of times. Yeah, and so so he's actually going to be kind of warning of the threat here, it looks like. Yeah. Um, and we also see Vision and Scarlet Witch together. Um, for, you know, comic book fans, they're going to be really happy about this because they've been a thing in the books for a while um, and they've only really hinted at their relationship. Yeah, they've been gradually building yeah. the cinematic relationship. They were both introduced in uh, yeah. Avengers Age of Ultron and then um, even though they did come out on opposite sides during Civil War, you could see that relationship building. And it's it's clear from this that they are more intimate than they've ever been and they're sharing a really nice looking place, they're making mm. it work, they seem happy yeah. together. Now, now it's uh, really interesting here though but uh, that you see the vision in this human form. He's not all purple and you know, androidy. He looks normal-ish. He's nor normal-ish. He's just got the big glowing yellow thing in his head. Well, that uh, does stand out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I think they, they're showing that for a reason. I think for two reasons actually in this trailer. They're showing it uh, one of the reasons is to kind of accentuate the fact that he has an infinity gem actually in his in head. Him. That's what's powering him. You know, and I think it's also there to help humanize him a little bit. Uh, because I don't think Vision's gonna have a really good time in this. Yeah, anyone yeah. knows who knows what Thanos is after is he knows that you know that they want the gems and yeah. he's got a gem in his forehead and that means that chances are Vision's about to be in a world of hurt. Yeah. So this is really the first solid indicator that characters we've loved and spent several movies with are in serious danger. Like mortal danger, people are gonna die danger. <laughs> uh, we're used to heroes winning, uh, but with something on this scale, you know they can't all make it. Uh, the first target on Thanos' list, probably Vision's gem, and that means no more Vision. Which sucks for Scarlet Witch. I mean, also sucks for Vision. Uh, we also <laughs> get a look at uh, new Marvel Worlds colliding. Here, uh, there's Thor on the Guardian ship. They do save that reveal for later, but it's still a really cool moment to see. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and the next shot uh, here is really cool too because we've got uh, Bruce Banner on the ground next to uh, uh, the big Hulkbuster armor hand, which it's he doesn't huge. have, and he doesn't have a good history with that, if you remember. No. Um, uh, and I'm pretty sure he's on Wakanda here. That that looks like Wakanda. Yeah, to me. if you if you look at the 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 color palette and the landscape, it does look a lot like Wakanda, and it seems like he's uh, potentially talking to Black Panther, mm. but it might actually be Black Widow's arm. You can see uh, her outfit actually in the next shot, and it does match up. With yeah, I mean, and I think that it's. It's, it, my my gut is telling me that it's uh, it's gonna be her because of the history that that she shares with Bruce Banner. Oh, it could be their their little reunion. I know, and and they haven't seen each other for what two years? He's been Hulk for two years ever since he left on the Quinjet right after Age of Ultron. Yeah, so we don't yeah. know what exactly the time gap is between uh, Thor Ragnarok and this, but we do know that by Thor Ragnarok, it's been two years that mm. uh, that he's been missing and that he's been Hulk. So it's been a long time since they've seen each other. Yeah, and you know they they develop their relationship pretty strongly um, and uh, you know emotionally it makes sense and uh, we do know that Hulk and uh, Black Widow are in this uh, in Wakanda together we see them fighting together later in the trailer So then we get the logos, the first swelling yeah. of the Avengers theme, but it's done in a much more foreboding tone. It's very slow, it's very moody, it's setting the template for some real stakes, again. Like fans of the tone that DC's been setting in their recent films have uh, criticized Marvel a lot for being too lighthearted and jokey, but it seems like Marvel's really embracing the gravity for this movie. So this next shot is one of the plainest shots in the trailer, but to me it's one of the most interesting. Uh, it, it's maybe not so much in terms of what it means for the movie itself, for the story, they're telling uh, but like in a broader scope thinking about what Marvel has accomplished because uh, think about it you have in one frame you have Tony Stark Bruce Banner uh, Stephen Strange Wong and they're standing in the Sanctum Centaurum five years ago this shot would have made everybody lose their shit <laughs> and right and here's just a throwaway shot you know that nobody's gonna focus on you know and, and it, it to me just really speaks to how crazy this universe has gone and just how crazy this and big this trailer is. Well, and they do get crazy from there. So this yeah. next series of shots is setting up the arrival on Earth of Thanos, his children, these huge CG armies. So you just really know that Earth is boned here. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite characters is Spider-Man. and uh, Spider-Man was great in Homecoming. It, he it was. was. It was a really refreshing addition to the MCU. Yeah, no, Tom Holland was awesome. But one thing that Homecoming kind of skipped over was the whole Spidey sense thing. You they know, they didn't do that They never very really much. showed it. Yeah, but uh, it yeah. is in this shot. It's it the is. very first thing we see, actually. Yeah. It's Peter Parker on his school bus. You see his arm hair standing on end, uh, alerting him to one of Thanos' halos floating over New York. Yeah, and uh, if you notice, in, uh, very shortly after you see the Sanctum Santorum team uh, notices this giant mechanical circle in the sky, too. Well, I mean, it would yeah. be hard to miss. I, <laughs> I would, yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, you don't need to have spidey sense to make your arm hair stand up to see that thing. Right. Um, Wong and uh, Strange seem to be prepared for the danger, if you notice in the shot. Uh, while Bruce and Tony just kind of look on dumbfounded. Well, remember though, yeah. that this is Tony's greatest fear realized. This is yeah. like the, the PTSD, uh, the trauma that he suffered after mm. the first alien invasion in the Avengers, uh, which was also there in New York. It's been a driving force for this character through the rest of the MCU films. And that, that guilt yeah. and that fear and that worry drove them in conflict in Civil War. And now he's facing that again, but on this unprecedented world ending scale. Yeah, and it, this is in many ways, the, this movie is promised to be a culmination of everything that's that's uh, they've been building towards. And, you know, so that makes sense for Tony. Yeah, so in this next shot is Loki stepping over bodies and he's seen offering up the Tesseract, uh, which if you've been paying attention, uh, is itself an infinity stone. It's not really clear who he's giving it to, though we can all imagine it would be Thanos, uh, presumably as a guarantee uh, of his personal safety since it's Loki. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is Loki. His yeah. number one MO has always been Look out for Loki. Yeah, that's uh, that's a defining character trait. Um, and the trailer's definitely cut to make it look like he's handing it to Thanos. But yeah, well, it does kind of cut together this yeah. other shot um, where we see uh, Thanos drop the blue gem into mm. his gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's got the flickering lights, the fire. Yeah. Admittedly, there's probably going to be a lot of both flickering lights and fire uh, in the full-on film, no. but it does potentially match up there. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we should talk a little bit about Thanos' introduction. He kind of comes out of a little portal thing uh, here, um, but only after we get a solid chunk of uh, threatening and intimidating voiceover, uh, which, again, really kind of sets up uh, this intimidating character that would require all the Avengers to, to gather together. So I think he looks the best that he's ever looked in the MCU here. Um, and he's pretty comic accurate too, because they actually now have cast Josh Brolin in the part. So now they can take his face and cast. like meld the Thanos uh, wrinkly chin onto him. Yeah, you um, have seen like in some of the, the previous movies, you just get these shots where he didn't look quite right, maybe a little yeah. bit too purple, but this really, uh, this grounds that he looks great. Uh, so if you glance over his shoulder, we're looking at what appears to be Wakanda. Uh, which seems to be a central location uh, in this trailer footage, uh, which is a very interesting part of the uh, the trailer for me, but we're gonna get to that a little bit more in depth in a second. Yeah, so the, yeah. because we've got a ton of stuff to talk there's about. So, there's so much more. Iron Spidey suit. So here's uh, the Spider-Man Avengers suit as it was teased <laughs> at the end of Homecoming in action. Spidey is obviously up uh, on that Thanos halo. He's trying to stop it from doing whatever the hell it's doing. <laughs> he knows it's no good for New York. Yeah, his, his arm hairs told him so. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Uh, and we, Thor also appears to be trying to stop a big mechanical circle thing with a door opening up behind him. Could be the same location, maybe where we see Loki offering up the Tesseract. We do know that Thor and Loki and Thanos were together after Thor Ragnarok, so it could be there. So that doesn't bode too well for the uh, people that Loki's stepping over. No, it does not. Like, since Thanos has the power gem, the Guardians left with the Nova Core, this could be Xandorians. Yeah, probably, probably. Um, it doesn't really, it doesn't look much like Asgardians. Something happened there, we're not sure what. Um, yeah. ch chances are this shot takes place pretty early on. Mm. They're on a ship somewhere. Potentially, this is also where uh, Thor gets separated from them. He gets maybe blown out into space, which is how he ultimately has his run-in with the Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy. It's like, uh, and here is really uh, a really great hero shot. You get a glimpse of a Proxima Midnight tossing a spear at a bearded, shadowy Captain America. Uh, so Proxima Midnight is a member of Thanos' Black Order, uh, comprised of his children. Uh, remember that Gamora and Nebula are also children of Thanos. Uh, so none of these kids are fucking around. Yeah, they yeah. are all badasses. Yeah, they're bred to do this. They're bred to be warriors. This um, is what they do. And well, and no. also we have this lovely shot, Captain America, uh, potentially going as a uh, nomad now, but mm. maybe out of practice, still really good at catching stuff. He's really great at catching yeah. shit. <laughs> and we've also got a bunch of cut arounds uh, to a bunch of action. There's the Hulkbuster in Wakanda mm. jumping into battle. So that's gonna probably tie uh, to that shot that we saw of Banner earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Black Widow stabbing some poor fool, which again, um, could place her in the right area. Yeah. Uh, Strange in New York, landing pods for Thanos' heralds, four armed outriders who you see Captain America, Black Panther, and Okoye punching. Uh, Okoye, by the way, that's the Walking Dead's uh, Denai Guerrera. That's the warrior and guard uh, of the king. Now, it seems to me that there's a big fight with Thanos, but if you look at a lot of the footage in this trailer, um, a lot of the big Thanos action seems to be centered around this one location. This is where the Avengers get beat up. In this locale, you see Thanos wrecking Spider-Man, slamming him into the ground. Looks like it hurts. Yeah, Tony's looking red-eyed and defeated, like he's been crying. It's something big's going down here. Um, this isn't gonna go well for the Avengers, I don't think. Now, this is a, a big reveal for non-comic book fans. So those who were paying attention knew that the, the shiny thing in Vision's head was the Infinity Stone, uh, that Thanos wants all the Infinity Stones, so the writing was on the wall for Vision, uh, but based solely on the feet and weapons we see here in this shot, it does look like Vision is pinned by Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight. That's, uh, that's two of Thanos' shield, and they're trying to get that jump from him. Yeah, but you need to keep in mind uh, throughout the trailer because we don't see any shots of the mind gem and Thanos' gauntlet during the showdown with Iron Man and the other Avengers. Uh, so we don't really know exactly what's ha what happens to it yet. Yeah, yeah, well, chances are Vision's losing it, but they don't show that here. Maybe they're keeping some secrets for, you know, the movie. Uh, yeah. Not that Thanos needs that gem to knock Stark out. Yeah, I, oh, I, man. I love, like, Thanos doesn't bother even punching him with the gauntlet hand. No, he doesn't need it. He just full on goes knuckles to armor, doesn't blink, and it's not even a flying punch. I Like, this is Iron Man going straight into the ground. It's more brutal than showy, which seems Thanos' style. Yeah, he folds, Iron Man folds, which is uh, really deadly, because this is uh, Thanos not at the height of his power. So we need to talk about Wakanda. To me, this is the, the most interesting uh, thing about the trailer. The biggest reveal of this trailer shows just how much of a huge location Wakanda seems to be in the story of Infinity War. Which is crazy when you think that we haven't even been properly introduced to it yet. We are gonna yeah. get that with Black Panther before Infinity War comes out, but yeah. for us still watching this trailer now, Wakanda is largely a mystery. 
Yeah, um, but we do see it in the background. We've seen enough of it to from the Black Panther trailers, from the little tees, uh, the post credits tees we've gotten, uh, to recognize this is where this action's taking place. Uh, we do see shots of Black Panther and his Wakandan army getting ready to face down the Outriders alongside Okoya, uh, Winter Soldier, Falcon, Captain America, War Machine, Iron Man, Hulk, Black Widow. The whole gang. Yeah, you, you can even uh, see the Hulkbuster Iron Man fighting waves of Outriders uh, in the aerial shot. Uh, that's a really cool shot of Falcon strafing the battlefield. Yeah. It is a great shot. So the big question though, why would Thanos and his army be attacking Wakanda? Uh, well, what does Thanos want? The Infinity Gems. He wants Infinity Gems. So, the, that's a good uh, bet that there's <laughs> an Infinity Gem in Wakanda. Okay. Yeah, probably already gotten the Mind Gem at this point. Uh, so then that raises yet another question. If he has the Mind Gem, uh, he has uh, the Power Gem, and he has the And we know where a time, couple of the other gems the are. The Space Gem. So that would mean that potentially the, the fifth, the one that's as yet unrevealed, uh, the orange soul gem yes. is in Wakanda, and that's what Thanos wants. And that's probably going to come up in the Black Panther movie, so uh, the, it's not a total surprise when Infinity War hits. Uh, but now we should probably, th there's a whole bunch of Infinity Stones in various Area, so we should yeah, yeah, we can go over those. We should probably <laughs> suss out where each of them are right now based on what we've seen in this trailer and what we know from the previous MCU films. All right, so here's what Thanos has, or, or likely has at this point. Uh, there's the, the yellow, the mind gem. This is the source of Vision's life. It's likely gonna end up in Thanos' gauntlet based on this trailer, which means Vision stand for the count. Again, they don't show this uh, gem in Thanos' possession, so there could be some trickery going on with the editing of the trailer. We are still five months out, so maybe that's one of the surprises they're trying to keep. Yeah, the trailer is only two-ish minutes. <laughs> um, so there's also the blue space stone, uh, which is the Tesseract that we see Loki offer up uh, to Thanos. He obviously swiped it from Asgard uh, before it uh, was destroyed at the end of Ragnarok. The purple power stone, uh, this is the stone that Peter Quill and the Guardians saved at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, he left this one with the Nova Corps on Xandar, and then when Thanos puts the space gem into his gauntlet, the power gem mm -hmm. is already there. So pretty safe to assume Thanos paid the Nova Corps a little visit. Remember all those bodies? That's probably them. But there are some that are missing from There are, the there are. Uh, what uh, he does not have or has been shown to have yet is the red reality stone. Okay. It was last seen on Nowhere in the possession of the Collector himself. Uh, and, and we were introduced to the Collector in the original Guardians of the Galaxy movie. That, yeah, no, that's right. Um, and, but if you remember, he uh, seemed to want the other stones for himself. Like, he actually explained in that scene what they all were. So we kind of know what these are because of the, the, uh, the because Collector. Because of the Collector. And so yeah. uh, how Thanos gets the red reality gem that he got at some point after uh, Thor 2 remains to be seen. Yeah, we don't, we don't know, know because he, he seemed to want it for himself. He, he made a big deal about really wanting to collect all of them together. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, Collector. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have nearly uh, as rugged of a chin as Thanos does, so I don't know if he's worthy of all. There's also the green time stone, and that's mm. inside the eye of Agamotto, which yeah. Doctor Strange gave up at the end of his movie, or, you know, put back, agreed not to wear, but he is, is actually seen wearing it uh, early on in the trailer when Banner falls into Sanctum Centaurum. So he's got that, but again, for how long, that, that may be why Thanos was in New York. Yep, yeah, and well, and that also raises the question of, uh, you know, if you have a person with the ability to rewind time on your team, then what threat is Thanos? So they're gonna have to answer Right, they'd have, have to, to get that, that away from him pretty yeah. quick, probably. Uh, so then that leaves the orange soul stone. Uh, and this is the big mystery one. This is the the one that we don't know much about yet. Um, Kevin Feige has said that we it will be revealed in, in this phase. Uh, obviously, it kind of has to be. It kind of has to be at this point. Um, uh, but it seems to make sense that, uh, that it would be in Wakanda. Uh, it, it makes sense to me, potentially held by Zuri, who is uh, Forrest Whitaker's character. Yep. Uh, who uh, happens to be a, um, uh, he's a shaman, a spiritual leader. It well, is that the, would tie in with the spirit it's, gem. It's the soul, yeah, it's the soul gem. Soul gem. It, it works. Um, it could also be used as a power source. It could explain a little bit why Wakanda has so much future tech uh, that we've seen. Um, so I, I have a feeling that we're going to see the soul gem in the Black Panther movie. Um, th that's my guess. Okay, but there is one final shot in the trailer mm. to just ease up a little bit on the whole crushing despair <laughs> vibe. Uh, the trailer ends with the big meeting of the one-eyed god of thunder and the guardians of the galaxy who are gonna play a big part in the fight against Thanos. It's this, it's a moment of, it's not like a funny, funny moment, but it is a little bit of levity, a little bit of hope, more of that worlds collide feeling and all of these heroes we spent all this time with 
coming together. It is, and Marvel, what's great is they still make a big deal about, they still make it feel big and epic that they are still introducing these characters together. Um, and this this uh, shot in particular really brings that out. Now, I saw some extra Infinity War footage earlier this year when I was at D23, um, and there was a pretty orgasmically geeky shot of Star-Lord teaming up with Doctor Strange. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, so these guys, and it was in a fight with Thanos, so these guys are for sure there to in fight. In the fight. Um, and, uh, you know, and that all makes sense because if you've ever read any of the books, pretty much half of the Guardians of the Galaxy team is either related to Thanos directly or like bred to kill him. Uh, right. Drax is supposedly one of the only beings that could kill Thanos, at least in the books. I don't know if they're setting that up in the movies. Um, and Gamora is his warrior daughter. Nebula, wherever she is. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's, some of that extra footage I saw also included uh, the Guardian's literal run-in with Thor. <laughs> um, and as he, he's floating unconscious in space, slams into their windshield and like rockets, like screaming like, you know, turn on the wipers and get it off and get it off. You know, being rocket. A little bit of levity. A I little guess. bit of levity. So this isn't all gonna the, be a bummer. Get the, gotta get that Guardian's jokes in. Yeah, so so I think that my my guess would be that he's kind of blown into space if I if I had to wager on it. He's blown into space after he's arm wrestling that big mechanical circle thing. Gotcha, okay. Uh, and he's unconscious and the Guardians run into him. Can you imagine like like passing out and waking up and you're surrounded by <laughs> a grumpy tree, mm -hmm. uh, this crazy tattooed brute, a green lady, a lady with an antenna, mm -hmm. and then like, oh thank God a human. I, rec <laughs> I recognize that. Yeah, no, and, and he only has one eye to take all that in, too, so. <laughs> so then he's got to basically convince them to get him to Earth and they join in the fight. Yeah. Now, uh, now curiously absent from the trailer, which we just mentioned, is Nebula. Uh, and that's really interesting because the last time we saw her uh, at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, you know, she had kind of warmed up to her, her sister, who was her mortal they, enemy. They make up a little bit. They, they have a cute hug. They have a cute, hug. cute uh, but, hug, but then she went off to deal with dad. Like she was getting revenge on Thanos. Yeah, and she's that's... out to kill him, but we don't see her in any of this. Now, some time has passed since then, um, which might not be something that a lot of people are taking into consideration. Right, because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two actually takes place immediately after one. It's yes. not, it's not concurrent in the rest of the storyline. They actually don't catch it up until the end credit scene. They do, and that's they. You can mark the passage passage of time in the height of Groot. <laughs> essentially. So she left when uh, Groot was a baby and now he's an adolescent as you see uh, in the group shot in the trailer. Um, uh, on the commentary for the Blu-ray release of uh, Volume 2, Gunn stated uh, that the time passed between baby Groot and adolescent Groot was about four to five years. Okay, so we're looking at that period of time. We know that Nebula's in the movie, but yeah. That's another mystery that's not been solved by this particular trailer. Again, I'm sure they're leaving a bunch of surprises for May 4th, 2018, when the movie actually hits. But we did yeah. get a lot of cool teases and a lot of cool hints in this trailer. So if you have any details that we missed, absolutely let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think is gonna happen in the movie, uh, if you're excited for it, uh, and get, leave us feedback on our breakdowns. We have a lot of fun with these. We love nerding out about all of it. So leave us that feedback. Um, and if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know and we'll do a whole bunch more of this. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could find